and welcome to our weekly series here at Black Ministries, where we are Bible lovers, achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, our weekly Bible study. Well, we are episode number 28 this week, and I pray that all of you have been enjoying this series, but we took a different twist about couples. Many of you probably thought when we said couples in our Bible, you probably thought about couples like Mary and Joseph, or Abraham and Sarah, uh, Isaac and Rebecca, you know, so couples like that. But no, we took a different turn or twist on this series. And this week, couple that we're going to be looking at is faith and love. Can you imagine that? Faith and love is a couple. Yes, they are. And we got scriptures to prove this. So we're going to be looking to see, is this couple usual or unusual? So with that being said, the key words today is going to be faith and love. But let's open up this uh, lesson today, and we're going to open up in prayer. Amen? So let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, Thank you for waking us up today that we get into your word and share your word with those that are hungry and thirsty for the truth. So open up our eyes and ears and our hearts to be receptive to receive what thus says the Lord from the word of God. Bless everyone, Father God, that is here today. We love you and we praise you and we thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So. Open up for prayer. It's a good way to start, isn't it? Your day. You can pray to God anytime, morning, noon, or night. He's open for your prayer. All right, then, everyone. So with that being said, as we always do, we like to give you a little backdrop of what's going on in the lesson today, what these words mean, and, you know, everything like that. So let's take a look at the first part of the couple, faith. Because once we understand who they are, uh, because faith and love, they are spirits. They are spirits. And so these spirits dwell in humans. They need a human body to dwell in, don't they? So that's why we need the word of God. So let's take a look and let's see how we would say the word faith in the Old Testament. And it would be called Edmund. And the New Testament is called Pistis. Okay, well, what is faith? Faith in the Bible means a firm belief in the word of God in which a believer has no doubt. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, faith can be in someone or something that requires a mental conviction that this is reality. What about love? Now, I love love. And many of you know that is my last name, love. I just love my last name. So how do you say love in the Old Testament? Because there are many words, uh, you know, for love in the Old and New. But for this lesson, uh, love, we're going to be looking at number uh, 157, which is aha. And the New Testament is called Asapo. Okay. So that love, what does this love consist of? Love in the Bible is the essence of God's character and the defining nature of his selfless, life-giving relationship with humanity. It is a sacrificial love that gives first and expects nothing in return. Love is the act of putting others before oneself and serving their interests and well-being. Love in the Bible brings believers a peace that surpasses all understanding, which comes only from Christ. And you guys are familiar with the scripture where the Bible says that God is love. So here we have faith and love. So we we now understand who this couple is. Do you think they belong together? Are they usual or unusual? We'll give you a moment to think about that. Well, Ms. Love is going to say this couple is usual because when you look at this couple, their core is God, isn't it? Faith in the word of God. God is love. Love is God's character. So you got faith in the word of God and you got God who is the word of God. You can't help but to love it. You can't help but to have faith in it. So it goes together. Faith and love goes together. It is a usual couple. 
So now let's get into some scriptures and let's see how this couple is getting along. Amen. Let's take a look at our first one. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7 through 10. Now, this was written around about 1486 B.C. And we're going to be looking at God's chosen people. So the key words today is going to be faith and love. And we're going to be looking for, okay, well, who's talking about this couple? And what are they saying about this couple? Is it usual or unusual? So let's take a look at the first scriptures, okay? The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hated him. He will repay him to his face. What a great warning or instructions that Moses given the children of Israel as they are in this wilderness and they haven't even gotten to the promised land yet. And did you notice the key words, love and faith? What did what did Moses tell the children? Uh, he said, the Lord didn't set his love upon you uh, because you were more in number, but he said, because you were the fewest. Now that's something right there, that God, the God of the creation of the world, of everything, and he looked upon the earth that the, the, those that he had created, and he said, "You know what? I I I got to put my love upon uh, some chosen people. That's going to be an example. Who is it going to be? Who can receive my love? Who can I choose to be an example of the love that I have for them, and they can go share it to others and let people know who I am?" It was the Israelites. Isn't that something? And his love was so awesome that he brought them out of bondage. He brought them out of Israel, out of uh, Egypt, didn't he? Take a look at verse 9. Here's the key. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. Uh-oh, what did Moses say? How did Moses describe God here? He said he is what? Faithful. So we already saw in verse 7 and 8 where God said he's loved upon us and God has loved you. And now he's showing us that God is a faithful God and he's faithful to those that love him back. God loves you and he wants you to reciprocate by loving him back because he's a faithful God. He's committed and we ought to be committed to God. It goes both ways. So I would say that this couple in this text, they are usual. They are usual because God is showing us who he is and uh, his character and everything and we can be faithful. We can be faithful to God. Amen. You know, that's why we're called Bible lovers. See that love? Why we're Bible lovers? Achieving Christ knowledge, understanding and wisdom because of the faith. We believe in Christ. We believe in our Bible. And when we believe in it, we love it. That's why we're Bible lovers because of the faith from hearing the word of God. Amen. All right, then, everyone. Let's take a look at our next scripture. Text number two, and we're going to be in Psalms 31, verse 23 through 24. Now, this was written around about 1000 BC. Okay, so let's take a look. And uh, verse 23 reads, Oh, love the Lord, all you his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewarded the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. So we just saw the last scripture where it says that we need to love the Lord. Now we got to add something to that. We got to what? Hope in the Lord. Isn't that what the scripture says? That faith is the substance of things 
hope for and the evidence of things not yet seen. That's scripture, isn't it? So here we got the writer telling us that we have a responsibility because we already know the Lord is love. God set his love on his people. He chose them. So now the tables is, is reversed. We got to reciprocate because he said that we got to love who? The Lord. And this is all his thanks. This is the believers, isn't it? The faithful ones, isn't it? So when we love the Lord, the writer tells us that the Lord is going to do what? What is he going to do to us saints that's been loving him? You know, loving him day in and day out, year in and year out, you know, from generation to generation. He said he's going to preserve the faithful. He considers us faithful. We saw in the last scripture that God is faithful. See, we're made in God's image. God is love, we love. God is faithful, we ought to be faithful. See, so love and faith, I will say, this is a usual couple. Amen? Now, also in the text, the writer is telling us that there's another kind of person in the text that ain't loving the Lord, that ain't faithful to the Lord. This person is the proud doer. Proud of doing what he does best. Alliance stealing corruption, manipulation. Oh, he just loves it. Cheating and, and scamming people, you know. And so the, the, the scripture here says, oh yeah, he, he got a reward and it's going to be plentiful. Oh yeah. You ever just seen some people, they're just so wicked, they're so corrupted that they are proud of what they do and now they ain't got no shame. They don't care if they put it out in a social media, they tweet it, they they uh, email it, they text it, Facebook, whatever you use, they're going to put it out there. They don't care. They're proud doers. They, they, they're proud to lie. They're proud to steal. They're proud to murder. They love it. They're proud of it. And they, and they love showing it to other people. Oh, but you're going to get a reward. You think your reward here on earth because you got the house and you got the power, you got the position, you got the money, you got the yacht, you got the gold, you got the women. You got the men, whichever way you go, whichever toots, toots, what horn toots you, whatever you do, you go get rewarded. Oh, and it ain't going to be the reward that you think. So you need to stop and you need to love the Lord so he can preserve. You can be faithful to him and not faithful to your schemes and scams and lies. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that right now. So for anyone that's out there right now contemplating lying on someone, you going to get caught. You will be rewarded. Look at some people today that's been caught lying, defaming people. You know, defamation now is a strong thing now. People used to defame you and, and, and you didn't do anything. Now you can sue. People are suing now. You're proving that you have been defamed. You getting your reward, liars. You, you proud ones, proud people. You getting your reward. And you're many of you in jail right now for, for being associated with your proud self. Woo all right, then let's move on to the next scripture. All right, let's go. Text number three, Psalms 92, verse 1 through 6. Again, this was written around about 1000 BC. So let's see what the writer has to say here. And the, the, the subtitle is Praise to the Lord for his love. And faithfulness. There it is right there, isn't it? So let's take a look. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy word. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O oh Lord, how great are thy works and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither does a fool understand this. Ooh, this is good, isn't it? Talk about faith and love being a couple. This is a usual couple. Look what the writer is saying in verse two. Uh, well, verse one, let's start there. See, the writer is giving thanks to who? The Lord. And he's giving thanks to the Lord. He's singing praises to the Lord. He's singing unto his name, the most high God, which we know is El El Yon. Why is he giving thanks? Why is he praising? Because now the writer is telling us something about God. 
about the Lord. He says, I'm doing this because you show forth. Take a look at verse two. Here's the key words. He says, because you show forth your loving kindness. When he says thy loving kindness, he's talking about the Lord's loving kindness. And when does he show it? In the morning. Isn't it something when we wake up in the mornings and the sun is shining and, you know, it's a beautiful day. You hear the birds uh, tweeting and everything. And we wake up like, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad. And I'm so happy. I'm so excited. Many of us are going to work. You know, we're going to do things, shopping, whatever we do. If we're retired or we're teaching, preaching, whatever we're doing, God has shown his loving kindness toward us in the morning. And then at night, he's faithful. Oh, he's faithful to lay us down every night and have us to meditate and think about and contemplate on the things that he's done for us during the day. You, that's why you ought to give thanks and praise to the Lord because he's loving us and showing his faithfulness to us. When? Is it just when he wants to? It says every night and in the morning. And so David reciprocates by showing his faith and loving in the Lord by playing the instruments. See, God gives us sun in the morning. He gives us the moon at night. We ought to give him something. We ought to play, sing, write, do something for the Lord to let him know that we are in love with him and we are love with him by faith. We ain't giving up. Ain't nothing, and like Paul said, nothing is going to separate us from the love of the Lord. Amen? All right, then, everyone. Let's take a look at our next scripture, scripture number four, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're going to be looking at 11 through 13. This was written by Paul around about 55 AD. Now, this is talking about, uh, you know, love. You, you know, uh, 1 Corinthians 13 is what we call the love chapter. You know, love is kind, love is uh, good. You know, love love is all of these things. But we're going to focus in on 11 through 13. So let's take a look and see what Paul has to say. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. But now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So there it is right there. Here is Paul letting us know, you know, when you're a child, and there's a difference when you're a child and when you are an adult. You know, uh, when you're a child, you don't have much, you know, uh, faith and love in anything because you're from one thing to the next. You ain't got time to, to set up uh, some concrete uh, foundation for your life because you're growing. But as you get older, and you go through life, now you begin to see, you begin to understand a little bit clearer, don't you? So now you can put your faith, you can put your love together and your hope together, all these three together, but love is the greatest. So like uh, Paul is saying here, now that he knows uh, who Christ is and his gospel message, Paul got faith in the gospel message and Paul loved the gospel message. That's why he, is, he was a great preacher and teacher and messenger of the gospel message. Amen? So there it is right there. This couple, love and faith, go together, don't they? Let's go over to our next scripture, uh, our fifth scripture, and we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 1, 15 through 18. Subtitle, Prayer for Spiritual Wisdom. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? So here we are looking for that couple again. 
faith and love. And Paul sure knows something about this couple, doesn't he? Because he was faithful and Paul loved the gospel message. That's why he was faithful until the day that he was uh, crucified upside down. Take a look. So therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. Isn't it great to have a reputation? Don't you want to have a reputation of your character? So Paul now is writing to the believers in Ephesus and he's somewhere else. I believe he's in Rome in prison, but he heard about the believers in Ephesus. He heard about their what? Faith. And what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So uh, the Ephesians had heard about the word of God, not only from Paul preaching, but Peter and James and, and Matthew and Mark and all the rest of them too. So he said, I heard of y'all faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for the saints. So now this is a couple and they put this couple together and it works awesome. It works great. Can't we do that today? Why don't we just love our brothers and sisters? Why we got to get on social media and hate one another? And like I said before, now today, the devil is so mad and mean. He don't care what he's saying or how he said to the people. He just lets you know, I hate you and I don't like you. Well, that's not Christian-like, isn't it? And we call ourselves Christian. And they want to be a part of this uh, uh, Christ, Christ, Christian movement. But you, you're a wolf. And she clothed them. That's what you are. That's what you are. You ain't got love for the saints. You got love for your wickedness. You got love for your corruption. You got love for power. You got love for riches. You got love for money. But you sure ain't got love for folks. You ain't got love for the saints. And you sure don't have no faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because what you say and what you do, Christ would not be saying it and doing it either. So Paul is trying to get us uh, to understand here and to see just like there was in the early church, we need to do that today. And Paul said, he does not cease of giving thanks for them, making make mention of you in his prayers. So Paul, uh, he heard about them and he's always praying for them. You know, it's just like with us today. You know, you hear people say, oh, I'm going to pray for you. Some folks, I don't, don't, don't pray for me because I don't know what you're going to be praying for. I don't know what you're going to be saying. You know, pray Pray for me in front of me. Amen. And so Paul here is telling them that when I pray to my father and Jesus, I mention you in my prayers. So it's good to mention people in our prayers, you know, for the good. We want the good to come out. Amen. All right, then, everyone, let's take a look at one more scripture. Last one, Philemon chapter one, verse four through seven. We y'all, men's love just want to let y'all know I got faith in preaching and I mean teaching God's word, but I'm gonna tell y'all right now, it is hot. It is hot here in Northern California. Amen. But we're gonna get through this lesson. All right, here we go. I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective. By the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Verse 7. For we have great joy and consolation in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. So there it is again. It's almost as if Paul has repeated himself again, isn't it? And this is the story. Y'all know the story of uh, Paul and Philemon. Uh, about Onesimus. Remember, Philemon, he was a lover of, of the word of God. Paul said that uh, he heard of his love and faith, which he had for uh, the Lord Jesus and all the saints. So this Philemon, he had a reputation, didn't he? Just like uh, uh, the Ephesians had a reputation. So Paul also mentioned Philemon in his prayers when he was praying. But something happened in Philemon's house there. Uh, he probably had a church. Uh, he probably had a church home. And there was a, a, a he had a servant there named Onesimus. Well, something happened. He got into it and Onesimus ran away. He, he ran away and he runs to Paul. And so Paul talks to Onesimus, but he writes a letter to Philemon. 
And so he's writing this letter to Philemon, and right off the bat, he tells Philemon, he lets him know, hey, I heard about your love and faith. I heard about that. So that is usual with Philemon, because that's usual in Paul's circles, you know, with the church, with the believers. Everyone had that, those two ingredients, love and faith, didn't they? Love and faith for the word of God. And so here, uh, Onesimus is now going back to Philemon. So Paul convinces him to go back uh, to, uh, to Philemon. And we know what happened. And Paul told uh, uh, Philemon to re receive Onesimus uh, back in love, you know, to receive him as his brother. So here is another example of this couple of faith and love. Even when we have uh, uh, disagreements in the family, we can still work it out. There is a mediator. There's an arbitrator. Someone can sit you down and help you to rationalize and reason with the conclusion of what you're going to be looking for in your disagreement. And Paul was great in getting Philemon and Onesimus back together again because love and faith is usual. Onesimus had it, Philemon had it, Paul had it, the church got it. What about you and I today? We ought to have love and faith as well. Amen? Not just for, not just for yourself, not just for those in your own household, but we need to show love and faith to all mankind, all mankind, because it could be just your, your kindness and your love and your faith toward that individual could change their very life. Amen? So let's do that. Let's make sure that we are coupled like faith and love and that we're showing it to our brothers and sisters. All right then, everyone. So that concludes this lesson this week, but it's not going to stop us from sharing with you to go over to MyBibleRegistration.com and click on the Bible lesson page there. And we're doing a wonderful series talking about fishermen of men. We're on episode number 28 there, and we're talking about the leprous man. That's right. We caught us a leprous man. And the fish that we're using is an ulcer fish. Just, uh, just like a, a person with leprosy, they break out with sores all over their bodies, don't they? And they're open sores. <laughs> Not a pretty sight. So you don't want to uh, miss uh, this week uh, teaching. Just go there. After you watch this lesson here at Black Coop, then you can go to the same website and catch the series Fishermen of Men. All right then, everyone. Then we want to remind you about the Bible reading plan. We pray that you have made your investment for this month. Uh, it's not too late to get on that Bible reading plan. We encourage you to make that time for God because God has made time for us. And so we want to reciprocate and give him. If you just give God one hour a day, I'm talking about just reading the Bible, nothing else. Not studying, not researching, not putting your lessons together, but just reading it. Just read it for one hour. You can make this great investment. And we have it right here on the screen for you to see. So for the month of uh, July, uh, you can give God, you can invest to God 31 days, 31 hours, 1,860 minutes, 111,600 seconds. You can do that right here. And join us every month. We bring up, we put up the Bible reading plan for you every month from January to December. You can get in on the Bible reading plan. And guess what? You're going to be a Bible lover and you're going to be faithful. Amen. So let's do that together. All right then, everyone. So again, we want to remind you, go to the Sister Love Talk Show. We got a great YouTube channel there. You can be our next guest. Just simply email us at faithandlove2 at yahoo.com. You don't want to miss being a guest on our show. We would love for you to be a subscriber as well. Our goal is to reach beyond 25,000 subscribers this year. I know we can do it, and we can do it because you are part of our uh, weekly uh, YouTube channel Bible Lessons. So this YouTube channel, Sister Love Talk Show, we gonna talk about everything. Whatever you wanna talk about, just email me. 
the subject and we'll get a, a show together and we can talk about your pets, politics. You know, this is the time of year. This year right now, politics is a hot subject because we are in an election year. So ooh, we, I'm sure I can get a lot of talks on that one, ain't that? Uh, your social media platform. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about relationships, your families, you know, you, you, you know, talking about the boys, you want to get separated, you want to get married, whatever it is, you want to split up, let's talk about it. And then, as always, we always go talk about the Word of God, amen? So we talk about the Word of God at BlackWhoMinistries.com, and we talk about the Word of God right here uh, at MyBibleRegistration.com, too. So we got you covered on the YouTube channel and on the websites as well. And we're on Instagram too. So you can follow us on Instagram. Just go to Love God Forever. Well, everyone, that's going to do it for us here. We're going to see you next week. I'm your host, Minister Love. And we're going to see you next week on episode number 25. And a couple next week is going to be Christ and the Church. So if you want to be, uh, make a, a donation to this ministry, we would greatly appreciate it. You're more than welcome to. You can just uh, click on the uh, donate uh, button that we have on our website, mybibleregistration.com, and we have a PayPal donation there. So if you uh, love this uh, ministry and you want to support us, we would greatly appreciate it because your donation goes right back into the ministry. We like to help those uh, that are homeless, and we have an international ministry as well. So God bless everyone. I'm Minister Love. I can't wait to see you next week on episode number 29. God bless and take care. Goodbye.